Halo, Ismail Musa TV. Okay, our topic for this video is about the content validity. This is a statistical approach. Okay. So many of us are into research, uh, whether this is uh, a thesis, a dissertation, or just a common research. Now, doing so, the one of the best practice is to ensure that you have a research instrument that is valid. Okay. Now, let's talk about content validity. Content validity is defined as the degree to which the selected item adequately represent the measurement instrument. That's according to Thomas and et al. Okay. In other words, is your research instrument able to manifest the characteristics that you intend to be manifested or to be observed? Or does it measure what it intends to measure? So that's content validity. There are so many types of validity. We have construct validity, concurrent validity, phase validity. But this tutorial, this video is on content validity, specifically on statistical approach to content validity. Now, I will concentrate much on Content Validity Index. Now, what's this Content Validity Index? Okay, so this will give us a degree or a certain amount which an instrument has an appropriate sample of items for the construct being measured. Definitely, when you have a research, you have a construct or you have dimensions that you want to measure. So does your research instrument able to measure those constructs? There must be a basis for that. It may be subjective judgment. Now, these subjective judgment are made by expert. Of course, this is done through some procedures to describe the content domain. Uh, using a representative set of items, assessing if items make sense of an expert. Okay. Now, let me enumerate to you the steps in content validity. You see in our screen now. So the first thing that you have to ensure is you have to prepare a content validation form. Of course, it means also that you have already a a research instrument. You have already your survey questionnaire that's granted. Okay? So we are now in content validity of your survey instrument or your research questionnaires. Okay? So the first one is prepare content validation form. Okay. Example of a content validation form, if I may provide you an example, is this one. Okay. So this is a sample only. No? Validation format for data collection instrument. Okay. Uh, this is a sample form for uh, content validity index. No? So for example, the title of the instrument for validation is this one. Okay. Uh, just for our example, I only concentrate on one sensory trait, which is appearance. Actually, there are many. Uh, there are four sensory traits, appearance, aroma, taste, and texture. It, when we talk about foods. okay. So what's the title of the instrument for validation? So you have the title, of course. Then you have to write, you have to inform the experts of what they are going to do in in your in your validation format for data collection so this is only an example of a a how you would introduce what you request from the experts okay you can read it for you 
Now, uh, this one is the instruction. No, uh, make your instruction so simple. So this instrument is used for the expert evaluator to assess the relevance and effectiveness of the instrument that is validating. So you are telling the expert that they can place punctuations that they consider appropriate to the different statements. Okay. So these are the four set of items that aims to speak about appearance of a certain product. In this case, celery, celery brownness, and carrots jam, jam filling. Okay? So what is important, I, I want you to give notice that we have a scale here. The scale here is not really about uh, the Sarbi questionnaire. This is actually a scale for measurement of the relevance of the items to the factors being measured. I hope it's clear. Huh? This is not in this is not the the Likert type no? for for Sarbi instrument. This is a scale for validation. Okay. So we have one not relevant, two, somewhat relevant, three quite relevant, and four, high relevant, or shall we say, highly relevant. Okay? So highly, highly relevant. Okay? So you are telling the expert that they are to rate each item as to whether it's relevant or not relevant when we speak of the appearance of what? Of this product. So, of course, the signature or printed name of the evaluator and, of course, the date. Clear? So, first and foremost, you must have your uh, rating forms. Okay? So, this is the rating forms for the e expert. Okay. So, clear? So, you must have that. Huh? That's the first. No? You prepare content validation form. Second, uh, you have to select a review panel of experts. So make it sure your panel of experts are indeed experts on their field. So you have to submit your survey instrument to persons who are considered experts in the field. When we talk of math, don't go to Filipino major. You, you look for teachers in math or professors in math. When we talk about food, we're experts in food. We have food technologists, food scientists. So you, you go to them. You submit your survey instrument for their evaluation. The question is how many? Of course, there is no, uh, there is no official criteria of how many will be the raters. But your school, your university where you're, you are enrolled with, usually come up with a fix number of evaluators. Now, doing so, you are now ready to go for number three, which is the conduct of content validation. It can be face-to-face -face or online. Uh, but it will be nice for face-to-face, -face, no? where they can write the, the immediate correction of your uh, giving punctuation to, or this. they can even check the spelling of, your, of, this, of the words in your sentence. Okay? So after that, uh, the experts critically review the domain, the items, and provide scores on each item. So how do you provide the scores? So you have your questionnaire. Remember our Sarbi instrument earlier, our validation instrument. Okay. So you have your questionnaire here, this one. So they are to rate whether this item is relevant somewhat relevant, re quite relevant, or highly relevant. So the expert can help you do so. Okay? So, and finally, you are now to do the content validity index. So this is the statistical parts. Okay? But uh, let me give you the, there are two types of CVI. Okay? The content validity index for item or ICVI so this is content 
Item Content Validity Index. And you have CBI for scale or scale content validity index. So when we talk of item content validity index, this refers to specific item validity index. While the scale is, we're talking of the entire, the, the, the questioner in total. Okay. So this differentiation is provided by Follett and Beck in 2006. Anyway, now, uh, earlier, I you, you may ask me probably that what is the number of experts in, and the implications that is acceptable no? uh, or a cut-off score for CBI. Okay? So you will have your number of experts, acceptable CBI values, and of course, our sources of recommendations. You can read it alone. Okay? Any question? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Let's go to the computation part. Okay. So, uh, as I said, no, you submit this to five experts no, for their evaluation. Whether this, whether this item is relevant or not relevant. So, each, each research, each uh, raters or experts will give their their the ratings now granted you have sought five uh, raters so let's say so item one here item two three four and we have five raters okay so rater one uh, rated your item one as four highly relevant item two highly relevant item three highly relevant and item four highly relevant. So definitely, Rater 2 will also give his own judgment, Rater 3, her own judgment, Rater 4, and Rater 5. Okay. So what is content validity index now? So we, we compute. Okay. So the ICDI or the item content validity index can be obtained by taking the number of agreement per item divided by the number of raters. Okay. So in, in case of item one, how many raters do we have? We have five raters, right? So we now determine how many agreements was made. The usual practice is uh, you can change this, uh, the ratings into one or zero. Okay. One means uh, they agree. One means uh, valid. Zero means not valid. Okay, so three or four is one, but uh, I, I do use uh, the Excel no, to look for how many agreed. So I come up with this count if. You know what's count if? Okay, this is actually a counting. Then you have the range and the criteria. The criteria is the, the ratings must be greater than three or equal to three. If it is Greater than greater than three or equal to three, it's being counted as one. Okay. So you just also copy this by dragging down. Okay. Uh, example, no. Uh, excuse me. Say uh, you simply drag this down. When you have the plus sign there, drag it down. So you have able to count. Why three? Because if you inspect, this one is four, four, and four. So three agrees. Well, this one is, uh, they agree, but they say the items is not relevant or somewhat relevant only. Okay? So you have here the number of agreements. So there are five raters rated four. So, so three and four is still agreement. In here, only three. Now, so the ICBI, therefore, of item one is one because why? Because that is five, which is the number of agreements divided by the number of, of raters, no? the number of raters. So five raters. So five divided by five is one. So, yun. so you also drag down. Okay? So that's how to get the ICVI. Okay? Now, to get the scale content validity index, you simply take the average of the ICBI. 
Okay. So literally, it's the mean. So just copy. Add divided by 4. Okay. Or we get, we compute for the average using the Excel. Okay. Now, what is our statement now about our results? Now, item 1, valid. Uh, valid. Item 2, valid. Item 4, valid. So we have questions on item 3. It's 0. 0.6. Huh? So it's 0. 0.6. So it, since it's 0. 0.6, Therefore, uh, you now recommend that this item 3 has to be improved. Okay? It has to be improved. Then you go back to the vibrators once more. Okay? Until it becomes 1. Because the criteria we set is uh, for... Three to five expert, it should be one. The acceptable CBI values should be one. Okay. So where are we? Here. Now, uh, though the SCVI is 0 0.9, so in totality, the, the four items is able to measure, but uh, not that... It did not pass, but this was the, the requirement is must be one. Okay. Now, the universal agreement is 0 0.75. Why? Because uh, of the four items, there are three that were rated to be in agreement. So, divided by four items, it's 0 0.75. Usually, uh, again, no, uh, 0 0.6 is acceptable. For overall, a 0.7 rather. This is 0.75. That's okay. But again, still, there's a need to improve item 3. You see? Statistically, it's shown. It was shown that uh, the rating scale is somewhat okay because it generated a SEBI of 0.9. But there is a need to improve item 3. Okay? It's clear now. Before you go, please subscribe. Thank you. May tak mahibok isam tu diam jayan. Hey, why am I very noisy? You know I am recording. 